uh, uh, minutes. I'd like to request all other speakers to please mute your videos uh, presentation. I'd like to start by welcoming and uh, introducing our Chief African Economist, Jeff Gable, uh, who is going to uh, start the presentation uh, on the index uh, right now. Jeff, you're welcome. Thank you very much for that introduction, and thank you everyone for uh, joining us. Um, in mid-October, Mauritius, we had head of private sector development and finance index. Third has since kind of the most deserving. It's also currency or social program. All those things are for the ABSA. Uh, to ensure that Africa is well placed to its domestic financial assets as well. So to do that, we think that African regulators and policymakers, the exchanges, the open that's transparent and uh, the ravages of the global pandemic than, than uh, even before. And it's critical to help ensure sort of a better life for, for all Africans going, going forward. OMFIF and ABSA provide this repository where country, and that is a collection of 17 countries, uh, reach to 23 countries, covers about two thirds of the African population and about four fifths of the continent's GDP. So as you see on this first content slide that David is showing, there's been really exciting developments over the last 12 months. So uh, to the east in uh, Ethiopia, the regulations are now in place. Um, sort of the reform of the primary dealer system, we think will really help with secondary market volumes and, and price discovery. So there's an awful lot that's been going on. If we go forward one page, it's also about sustainability. And so we know that Egypt last year was the very, as the continent was starting to recognize the challenges that uh, COVID would provide and, and think about how to accommodate some of the economic for Rwanda and the fight against sort of in finance, Namibia looking uh, to work with the UN's Green Climate Fund. So lots of focus on sustainability. But for today, we're focused here on the African financial market in front of you right now. In terms of the top three countries, well, no change in positions one and two. South Africa retaining the top spots, maintained second place in our developments and kind of showing those. Um, when we launched the index four years ago, recent edition, the one we're talking about today, 14 countries have improved their scores to 50 or more. So sort of everybody in the end. For Uganda, the 2020, which really in a few moments, but first, I just want that, that we measure. It's around markedly critical for the development of various agreements and the standardization of concepts. And we're going to discuss each of those. David will discuss each of those in a little bit more detail in a moment. But, but let me just set the scene here and say that there's more than 40 things that we measure. We compiled the index in the th things like market few months. For that data, we'll need to, you can see details on all of the measures on page 38 and, and 39 of, of the report. But just to say that, Right. We know that a secondary market that's very uh, around qualitative fashion kind of lower that sit in there. And the thing is the discussion is and, and I hope that today is a, a great example of that. But my time's come to an end. Let me hand over to David to talk you through the Uganda results in, in greater detail. Thank you. So thank you for setting the scene on how Uganda has scored across the six pillars. Uh, I'll also be walking through a presentation and show, so you should be able to see in more detail. Uh, we are going to start with the first pillar uh, and that is uh, market depth. So on market depth of all financial markets, the markets um, uh, came ninth and this is one place up from the previous survey. One of the key drivers for Uganda led last year which uh, has a greatly improved liquidity in, uh, in the bond and bill market. Uh, we've seen uh, the central bank and Ministry of Finance being quite liquid, surprisingly, uh, despite the fears. Uh, I just want to show a picture of the market capital to the top five countries, but drop. Uh, pillar number two, which is access uh, to foreign exchange. Uh, Uganda came in second. Countries with Uganda highlighted in those boxes compared to the East African countries. So this is the pillar in which Uganda leads East Africa. And the main reason uh, for that is change red. Uh, and for we don't have the graph. Can you put on the 
Thank you. Carry on. Carry on. Thank you. Great. In the East African countries, Uganda can hold this and depreciation in a lot of the countries. And many people are wondering and panic, what is the special thing about Uganda? Well, because we have a stable and an open exchange regime, and also because we have had uh, confidence in how the economy is being run, we have had a significant amount of portfolio flows that have come through into our market, our currency fairly stable. Uh, it, it's we one of those uh, countries where I know uh, our governor has been praised uh, across Africa also for managing the economy well. There are obviously certain questions around uh, uh, debt, and I know that that's a key topical issue which will probably be dealt with uh, later. Uh, but I just wanted to say that so Uganda is looking good, especially on uh, access to three places from the previous index, previous survey. And this measure really uh, uh, measures transparency in terms of market transparency systems and regulatory for Africa like Ghana have uh, created a favorable environment for investors and corporate credit ratings. Uh, uh, and, and the main differentiator between the two of us is corporate credit. Uganda has three corporate credit ratings while uh, uh, we have also had uh, a modification or an improvement on our tax regime, uh, having uh, a tax on the 10 and 15 year impact in this score and also what different countries charge on interest, on dividends, and also the number of tax treaties uh, that are held by the various uh, or interest or dividends, Uganda and Kenya still the high. Pillar four is a measure of the number of special assets per capita lie right now compared to the rest of East Africa. Uh, when you think about the whole of Africa, the top countries on, on the index have a per capita, uh, uh, per capita pension savings of a thousand dollars or more while uh, Tanzania, Uganda, and Rwanda, that's some jobs that we'll be able to discuss. Yes, banking sector health and uh, the quality of governance uh, in the economy. Uh, Uganda dropped, uh, whilst it's still leading uh, 2019, being overtaken by strong growth uh, uh, at the level that we're at. Uh, external debt levels are also a key driver. And I know that's a topical discussion and a, a main concern for a majority of people in the financial markets. Uganda's uh, external at the time of this survey was really lower than the majority for Uganda. And then talking about macroeconomic growth, our macroeconomic growth has been fairly high. And as a result, the impact of the pandemic has been uh, muted, not as bad as has been felt in other countries uh, uh, like uh, South Africa, so uh, um, into 1.6%. Uh, the pillar is the legal, legal uh, frameworks and documents that basically uh, in Uganda, uh, that's in uh, our peers in East Africa. We know that uh, uh, there's some one, basically, uh, I think there's all these those in, in the other East Africa. The other things also is netting position enforcement. So right now, because of financial transactions, all 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 positions have to be physically settled, and we don't have close out netting on the end of it. So if somebody has to pay a, a DFC and DFC has to pay a, a Centenary Bank, and we are all paying ourselves on the same day, we have one bank we probably have to receive funding provisions. We'll be able to net on that is under consideration, uh, which is then more banks will be able to do financial of the various banks. So this is where Uganda lies, uh, and I don't want to spend too much time. This is now a snapshot. Uh, sorry, this slide may not be very how Uganda has performed across all uh, the six pillars. Of them shows that the tools of the standard master financial agreements and the capacity of local investors, which is I think the pillar in which we perform the lowest. Uh, this basically sets the ground for uh, stakeholders in the financial markets and policymakers to look and see what can we do and what changes can we make to basically. Uh, we have following my please post questions on the side of the chat such that we'll have them ready for the panelists uh, when they come to talk uh, and share in a few minutes. But coming under, uh, he's going to be taking us through the macroeconomic outlook uh, for Uganda and sharing uh, uh, the risks. Uh, Riddle, uh, the seat is yours. Welcome. Thank you. Good morning, uh, and thank you, David. 
And um, yeah, thank you for the opportunity to present to you today. Um, um, yeah, we certainly had a very um, unprecedented uh, 20, 2020. Um, we know that um, the Uganda uh, authorities have been able to uh, contain the spreading of the virus into for containing the spreading of the virus. Um, however, Uganda has obviously been severely impacted by, by the pandemic, no doubt about that. Um, we've seen the economy uh, second, um, second, at least the first quarter, initially um, the authorities indicated or the stats office indicated that uh, we will probably see a positive growth that has been adjusted to, um, to show contraction as well. Uh, we know that the economy contracted by 6.3% in the second quarter. Um, and in the third quarter, um, it also um, showed a contraction of uh, just over 2%, um, effectively moving it into, um, into a recession, a technical recession at least. Um, but given the fact that uh, we've seen um, growth averaging around minus 3%, uh, percent in the first three quarters of the year. Um, just a reminder for people to put themselves on mute. Um, but you can see from